congrats. You didn't give up. You made it to part four. You clicked on the next part of the video. There's always like less viewers each uh, video as you go down. So you're here. Well done. Thumbs up. Um, as you can tell by the title of this video, we're going to learn about sculpting. But first, I should call out, uh, if you have a problem with your mesh now, those problems can be amplified the further you go along. So it helps to do a technical check now. Make sure you don't have any problems before we move along. So to look for it, go into edit mode. Um, and first of all, by the way, if you can't see that middle part of your mesh, it's because you remember we temporarily hit it. So you can bring it back by hitting Alt H and that will uh, bring back the rest of the mesh. And then we're looking for issues with the mesh, like right here. So this is a really common problem following this tutorial, because when you're projecting parts of the mesh, if it was like side onto the camera, it will project it that way. And then you can have like overlapping parts of the mesh. So that creates this artifact here, which will be exaggerated when we add more detail to it. So we just want to drag that back. So turn on uh, snapping and uh, I'll keep proportional turned off. And then I'm just going to move this back over here just to move each of these points back. Um, another very common problem is you might have parts that have separated uh, from your mesh. Now you can quickly fix this if you just like selected the point and then ta uh, sorry, hit G to move it. When you're in that state, it's also snapping it to the mesh. Now you could do that all the way along, like select, tap G, then click, select, tap G, then click. But that's, anybody's got time for that. Let's make Blender do the work for us. <laughs> so there's a tool that's just designed for this and it's called the Shrink Wrap Modifier. So over to our trusty modifier stack, we're going to add yet another modifier. So add modifier. It's not under generate, it's under deform, which we haven't accessed before. New modifiers. Ooh, the one we're looking for is shrink wrap. And first of all, hasn't done anything because uh, it's for, it needs to know what the target is. What is the mesh that we're shrink wrapping our um, mesh to? So with this little eyedropper tool, you can see when you've clicked it, my cursor's changed to an eyedropper. And it, now if I hover over objects, I got the name of it. So I want to click on the object that is the donut. And now it's snapped to the donut and made it worse. Why, Andrew, would you make us do that? Remember, the order of your modifier stack matters. So the reason this happened is because we've done it after the solidify mod. So if it works top to bottom, we want the shrink wrap to happen before any of the extrusion happens. So now that it's there, it's correct. And this is what it looks like before, and this is after. And it's subtle, right? And you'll probably see this across your mess, like little subtle changes where maybe it just separated off the mesh, which wasn't quite a perfect alignment, but this will just correct that. So. Great, we don't need this here now. We can just apply it because it was just a once off operation. And now all our mesh should be perfectly flat. And assuming you haven't got any other issues going on, uh, again, make sure you use my Discord. If you do have issues and you need someone to help, um, make use of the community. So use that and post your problem and I'm sure people can help out. All right, so <clears throat> we want to do some sculpting. Now, why do we want to sculpt? Well, because if you look at reference photos of uh, donuts with icing on them, you'll see that icing is obviously a liquid and liquid does weird things. One of the weird things that it does is that it will pool in certain areas. It's not like a uniform amount all the way on it. So the most obvious being like at the end of this trail here, there would be more that would accumulate at the end there. And I think the reason for it is that because it's a viscous fluid, once it runs out of enough fluid, there's not enough to kind of push it forward, but there's enough for it to build up. So you would have like a build up here on each of these ends, but you would also have build ups all along the edge. And you can see it in reference photos. Like here, we've got this like clear, um, was it like a glaze? And basically the areas there where it looks whiter, that's a thickened area. So we essentially want to replicate that across our donut. So we can't do that currently. Like if you go into edit mode, we don't have any mesh to work with because the extrusion, the thickened part is happening via this modifier. So we need to make the modifier real. So again, we're just going to apply it. Drop down, apply. Now in edit mode, we have that part of the mesh to work with. So um, we could, if you wanted to come in here and like select the points that you want to add, you know, a bulge to, and then very carefully come in and tap G and then, oh, I've got snapping turned on, turn that off, uh, pull this out, right? And go like that and go, yep, there's a little bulge there, but that's very tedious to first select a point, then tap a key to move it. It's, it's very tedious. So 
that's really like you just need to use another tool to do the job. So edit mode is one tool and it's, it's, it's good for like very precise things when you need to get precise things. But for more like organic shapes, more freehand stuff, that's where sculpting comes in. So at the top here, we've just been flipping between object and edit mode, but the one underneath it is sculpt mode. So when we go into that mode, you'll see that we have on the left-hand side, all of these tools that appear. And I mean, this isn't a sculpting like tutorial, really. Um, we're just really gonna scratch the surface, but they do different things, um, different sculpting things. Like let's just use the default tool here. Can't really see much happening. Let's just turn up the strength and the size of it. Like it just pulls out that part of it. And even that quick little one stroke, imagine if you had to select each of those points and pull them out one by one, like that's why this tool is the appropriate tool for this kind of job, right? Because it's very quickly gonna enable us to add lots of complex shape. Very cool. So uh, the tool that we're looking for is actually, it's this one, the inflate brush, which is just uh, conveniently the I hotkey inflate. By the way, uh, if you want to change the size of brushes in uh, Blender, I mean, you've got these ones here, you've also got the strength slider here, but there is a hotkey uh, just to change the size of the brush with F. So F to change the, the size of the brush, um, and you just pull out with your cursor to make it bigger and then pull in to uh, reduce it and then do a single left click to confirm. You can also change the strength with Shift F. So Shift F, pull out, click, and then Shift F, pull in, click. Um, anyways, so if I was to uh, draw on this, you can see that I'm inflating that edge. I could also inflate here, but you very quickly realize, like, look at that, look at that. What is that, right? The eye is gonna see that. Um, it's a pro tip. Your eye is uh, like, if you're going low res, don't go low res for things that are round because your eye is very quickly going to spot uh, low poly things. Actually, just last night I was playing a uh, Spider-Man, the Miles Morales one, and uh, there was like this coffee cup that was on a table, and then you walk, and it looks fine, like as a, a background asset, but then part of it, the mission, you had to go up and read something on the table, and you had to get close to this coffee cup, uh, coffee cup, and it was like eight vertices, it just looked like a, almost looked like a nut on a wheel of a car, right? Just like that jagged. So, anyways. What I'm saying is this is a rounded form, so we need more information. We need more detail uh, to sculpt on. The reason this is jagged and the reason there's not enough detail here is that just even though we have a subsurf modifier, a subdivision modifier, um, it's applying it after we do the sculpt mode. So when you're in sculpt mode, it's still just using your, uh, your raw mesh here, and then it does this as a secondary step. So if we wanna sculpt into this detail, we need to apply this. So um, I actually, I'm gonna use more than one. I'm gonna use two, because I want to have even more detail. So um, importantly, by the way, if you're applying a subdivision modifier, even though you've got two levels here, it will always use just the viewport. So your render amount here could be whatever, but when you hit apply, it's just gonna apply whatever is in the viewport. So I'm gonna go two levels and hit apply. Now look at this. Whoo. We have 16 times the detail because we had uh, level one, which would be 4x of 4x uh, multiply, and then 4x of 4x, 16. So we have 16 times the vertices to play with. So now when we go into sculpt mode, look at it now. When we sculpt, look at that. So much more room to work with um, and much more fun. So now that I'm in that state, I'm going to just do little circles with this brush on each of these points here. Um, and the reason I'm doing like little circles like this is that uh, by default, the stroke state is, uh, what is it, space. Um, you can switch it to airbrush if you want, and then you can just click and hold it there. But I find that to actually be like harder to control. So I just keep it in space mode and then just do like little circles. And then that enables you to just kind of continue add, adding more pressure as you move your mouse. So a little circle like that. And there you go, very quickly, already we have a more interesting uh, looking shape across it. So another brush, another tool, I guess you call, is it a brush or is it? I think these technically are called brushes. But anyways, another one that you use all the time is grab um, and conveniently it's the hotkey G. And what this does is just like pushing clay with your finger, it's like eh, 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 eh. It's really cool. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm actually just uh, exaggerating uh, the design 
um, because that is what makes appealing design. It's exaggerating uh, the addition and subtraction that you see in a, in a shape, even though in the real world you might not see this like tapered thing like that. Um, because it's got this bulbous end, you want to draw more attention to that kind of globule at the end there. Um, and to do that, yeah, if you just make this a little bit tapered using this tool, it can do that. And we get to learn about a new tool in Blender, which is the whole point of this tutorial. So, yeah. All right, pull this around, pull this around. Just click and drag and click and drag. I could change the shape, size of the brush with F. And um, you've got more time than me, so maybe make this better than what I'm doing really quickly. But just get, you know, generally a shape like that and it should look a little nicer. Okay, so now let's do that uh, raised edge all the way around the rim of this. Now in previous versions of this tutorial, I said just use the inflate brush and then just like draw across it. The problem with this is that this is so imprecise and you can accidentally like draw over another bit and then you look at it side on and you get these like noticeable like divots <laughs> across the donut. And it's not very, uh, it's very hard to do because you keep like accidentally clicking off it and then on it and you get this like jagged like dig, 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 dig. It's not very appealing, the point is. Uh, so let's go back. We can learn about another tool. It's, a, it's another excuse to learn about another tool. And that tool is called the mask tool. So it's actually in the list here, but I never remember what it is. It's just hit M, M for mask, and it's this one. And what this enables you to do is, uh, if you just draw on it, you get this grayed uh, shape, right? And then when you're using another tool, like say you switch to the inflate brush now, and if you draw over this, let me just increase this. Yeah, if you drew over this, you can see it's applying an inflation to everything except the area that is dark. Um, and that's how you can create like, you know, a skin lesion on a zombie or something like that. Um, so a mask is very useful in sculpting, used a lot. And we're going to use it in just this case. What we're going to do is mask out just this area along the rim there. And then we're going to apply a constant inflate value to just the area that we've masked. So first use the mask tool, Oop, mask. And it doesn't really make sense to use like a half opaque mask. So we're gonna set the strength all the way to one. And then I'll use a brush size about here. So essentially, where do I want the inflation? Like, do I want this much inflation on the rim? No, probably something about here. And then I'm just going to paint a darkened value all the way across it. And I just wanna make sure that it's, you know, fairly even. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, but fairly even across it. And I obviously don't want it to be in this part because that, you know, the liquid has flowed all the way down and it's broken the trail and it's gone down there. So I don't want any raised area there. Um, and again, I apologize if this was like tedious, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a way to learn Blender piece by piece. Okay. Hey, hey. speaking of which, um, I forgot. <laughs> With the uh, sculpt tools in Blender for whatever reason, it has assumed by default that you might want to sculpt on the other side of your mesh. So you can see I've got this smear here, um, and that's because somewhere I was painting over here, I went through the mesh and it painted on the other side of the mesh over there. Very annoying. So um, I can undo it. It's just easier than like repainting that whole thing. And what you want to do with your mask tool is underneath brush, set it to front faces only. And that means when you paint, it should mean that as you draw, uh, it will, it, okay, it could still happen, just be careful, uh, but it should happen less. It shouldn't happen like on the opposite side of the same mesh. Anyways, it should happen less. Um, by the way, I didn't call it out because it's not essential, but if you do ever want to isolate uh, and only see the selected object, uh, forward slash is the isolation mode. Uh, so forward slash on the number pad or the actual normal keyboard will pull you in and out of that state. Anyway, so now with the mask brush, with front faces only enabled, uh, I can paint along it and uh, and it should, it should happen less, essentially. All right, um, I don't know what to say, but this doesn't take long once you've, uh, once you've set it up. And assuming you've got the strength of one, by the way, you don't wanna have areas with like half opaque 
right? Because we want to have a constant value across it as we inflate it. And we should get a nice raised edge that goes all the way along the donut. Okay, great. Just clean it off if you've got any areas that look a little untidy, a little unkempt. Um, yep. Awesome. All right. So, as I mentioned, the mask will uh, actually mask out the area um, so you can't paint on it. We obviously want to only paint on the area that we mask. So we want to invert it by just hitting Control I, same hotkey as uh, Photoshop, etc. And then, obviously, if we went to the inflate brush and then we just painted, like, yes, we're only now painting onto that area, but it also doesn't solve our problem of, like, different values across it. So we want to apply a uniform inflation on just these areas. So there is a tool in the Sculpt Tools called, where is it? Mesh Filter. So I will be honest, it's probably the laziest implementation of a tool in Blender. <laughs> like mesh filters, they're not really well documented. You kind of have to just learn how they work. But unlike all these other brushes here, the way this one works is it's applying a uniform value to the entire mesh. So it doesn't actually matter where you click on the mesh, um, it's going to apply it. And it's applying what is in the filter types listed here. So if I just click, this is the other thing I have to learn. If I drag to the right, I'm inflating. If I drag to the left, I'm deflating and sort of subtracting the opposite direction. Um, you just kind of have to learn that that's how this specific tool works. My theory is, by the way, <laughs> to go on a rant, ZBrush's user experience and interface is so arcane, so badly hodgepodge together from ideas over the last two decades. They never had any thought in the process. They just lumped it all in there. And Blender's sculpting tools competes with that. So they're like, hey, yeah, the uh, filter tools, yeah, they're not the easiest to understand, but at least we're not ZBrush. <laughs> that's, my, uh, that's my theory. It's my working theory I'm going with. But anyways, point is, is now that we're in this, you could see we're applying a uniform value to everything. Hooray for us. Um, I might also, I'm going to set the strength of this to 0.1, and that just means that as I move the cursor, it's applying less of a value for the, for the movement, so I can use smaller movements. The other thing, though, is this is a little, like, it almost looks, if we go into object mode, it looks like a tube almost around the edge of it. It's not very nice. Um, it Basically, the edge that we've got here is too hard. So we can smooth out that edge by using mask, smooth mask. Okay. Now, if we use the inflate, just to the right a little bit, I'm just going to go with that. Let's go object mode and see how that looks. That's pretty good. I might actually go just a little bit more. Just exaggerate it slightly more. There we go. Great. So, yeah, that's roughly it. Now, there's a little bit of artifacting there because the, the way the mask works is it's kind of that feathering thing. It's not very exact and it's kind of got some values in between it. So we can smooth that out in sculpt mode by, first of all, just clearing the mask and then using the smooth tool. Um, by default, it's too high, so just turn it down. And I'm just going to smooth that edge, and that'll just sort of clear up some of this artifacting. It's a little too high. For whatever reason, the Smooth tool, which also you can access at any point when you're in Sculpt mode, just by holding down Shift, and it'll temporarily uh, invoke the Smooth tool. And uh, it'll use the value that is on the smooth tool. So you'll be in this mode and then you hold down shift and it'll actually not bring, use this value, but the value that's on the smooth tool. Um, again, ZBrush is the competitor, so some things are a little weird here. Anyways, um, so it's a little too high. Just turn it down and now I've got a nice value. And I'm just smoothing this out just to clear up some of the artifacting all the way around the mesh. Ba -doop, boop, boop. And that's it. Lovely. Hey, if you've made it this far, 3D is in the cards. It's for you because uh, we've done some fairly complex things. So if you're a beginner and you're just getting started in Blender, congrats um, because it is a steep learning curve, but you have learned some very complex modeling and uh, some sculpting. So congrats, you've made it this far. Why not continue on the series? Click here to see the next video and I will see you in that part.